Big Bang, what's going on? Joshua Poirier here, live from the Lip Bar, the only independently owned bookstore in the Bronx. So happy to have you here. Welcome to the Encore session. Let's go inside. Hello, my name is Latoya Beecham. I'm a rising senior at Hero High School in the South Bronx, and I'm also a Here to Hear ambassador. I'm very excited to be a part of the Story for Sister series. Today, I will be reading Listening with My Heart, a story of kindness and self-compassion by Gabby Garcia. Esperanza's tummy fluttered as she practiced her lines on the porch. Today was the class play. Waiting for Mama to walk her to school, she paced back and forth when she spotted a heart-shaped rock. Esperanza picked it up and showed it to Mama as soon as she stepped outside. I see you found a little treasure, said Mama. Esperanza rubbed its rough surface and felt a twinkle of joy. Maybe it's a sign. For what, asked Mama. She thought about the class play later that afternoon, wondering what it would finally be like to be in the spotlight. To put my heart into everything I do, she answered. At that moment, they heard scratching and the soft cry. Esperanza peeked underneath the stairs and spotted a kitty shaking and shivering. No mama in sight. She scooped up the kitty into her lap and cuddled her. She's all alone. I think she's hungry. Esperanza reached for her lunch bag, pinched off a piece of chicken, and offered it to the kitty who gobbled it up. Mama, I think the rock is a reminder to spread kindness and love. That's what we do when we listen with our hearts. I think you're onto something, said mama. Can we keep Cleocatra? Please, asked Esperanza, Esperanza, who'd already named the kitty. Queens are always welcome at our house, said Mama. If she's still here after school, we'll take her in. She wondered if he felt lonely or scared. Esperanza found a soccer ball and kicked it over to him. A smile spread across Bao's face. He stood, popped up the ball in the air, then bounced it between his knees and his head a few times. Dude's got moves, thought Esperanza. They spent recess giggling and making hand signs. Afterwards, Esperanza borrowed Miss Owen's English Vietnamese dictionary. She wrote friend in Viet Vietnamese, drew a picture of Bao and her, then put it on his desk. Esperanza rubbed the rock inside her pocket. Listening with her heart made her feel peaceful inside. Finally, it was time for the performance. It was too late for Bao to be in the play but he stood at Miss Owen's side as a stagehand. Excitement bubbled as Esperanza's awaited her cue. Esperanza walked on the stage, tripped as she was about to say her first line and splattered across the stage. When she, for, when she got up, she forgot her lines, so Miss Owens whispered them to her from the back of the stage. Heat rushed through Esperanza's body as all eyes were glued to her. She wished she could disappear. I ruined the play, thought Esperanza, rushing off the stage as soon as she'd finally realized she missed her part. I messed up in front of everyone. She tucked herself in behind some props so no one would see her. Esperanza noticed her body shaking and her face still burning. She took a deep breath and dug the rock out of her pocket. It was cracked and lopsided, just how she felt. Esperanza touched her hand to her heart and felt the disappointment. Bao found Esperanza a few minutes later and handed her a drawing with the words friend written above it. Esperanza nodded. She hadn't been treating herself like a friend. Esperanza realized that this wasn't the first time she'd been unkind to herself. At the soccer game last weekend, she'd missed the ball that swooshed by her head and they lost the game. Nice work, a player from the other team yelled as the others laughed. Esperanza thought she'd let the team down and she was the worst soccer player in the world. Thinking those thoughts made her feel worse. At the curtain call, Esperanza reminded herself she hadn't ruined the play. She'd had an accident and accidents happen. Listening with her heart wasn't just about giving kind and love to others, it was about giving it to herself too. I can be a friend to myself, thought Esperanza. When Esperanza got home, she focused on her favorite things. She zipped down the hill on her bike, then spent the afternoon painting at the kitchen table. She also got hugs that she needed from Mama 
and Cuddles from Cleopatra. Thank you. Friends, welcome to the 2021 Big Bang Encore session. We were so honored to have uh, LaToya conclude our Stories with Sisters series. Uh, I hope you've been following along for the last half year. Um, those videos, as well as LaToya's, can be found on Big Picture's YouTube channel. Um, LaToya's will join the rest uh, in probably just a couple of weeks. Also very honored to have the Lit Bar host us for that event. And today I'm coming to you live also from the South Bronx <clears throat> here at Fannie Lou Hamer Freedom High School. Uh, one amazing thing that happened during the filming of that, you might have noticed that LaToya was seated in the children's book section. Just by sheer coincidence, I happened upon this book called Celebrate Your Body by none other than so Sonia Renee Taylor. Um, Eva, I'm sending this to you. Wonderful job. Wonderful conversation. So inspiring. Thank you so much. Um, I'd like to uh, introduce my colleague and friend, uh, Carla Cruz Godoy, into the conversation. Carla, among other reasons, uh, I wanted to invite you here because you're one of our former alumni of the year. Yes, what an honor, actually. <laughs> what an incredible honor. So um, yes, uh, it's, I think it's such a wonderful um, celebration that Big Picture Learning has um, of its alumni. And not only being a former, well, a graduate of a Big Picture Learning School, but also a recipient of the Alum of Action Award, we think it's important for our alumni to you know, reconnect uh, with the organization, which is why um, with the help of other alumni, we've started what is now known as the Big Picture Learning Alumni Association. So if you have, you know, alumni in your advisories, in your schools, um, BPL, A, well, BPLalumni.org, there you go, let's forget to be on the website, check it out. But without further ado, um, I would love to introduce Julia Bamba, um, principal of Gibson Eck, who will be talking about our recipient of this year's Alum of Action Award. Thank you, Carla. I am proud and honored to introduce Yvonne Mahesh to all of you today as the recipient of Big Pictures Alumni of the Year Award. I met Yvonne in 2016, just before we were opening Gibson Eck. And once Yvonne heard about Gibson Eck, he was all in, completely ready to leave his high school and join us. So we launched in September of 2016, and Yvonne was ready to take advantage of every opportunity that he had in his new school. However, he was kind of still stuck in this traditional mindset and had convinced himself that he could independently get through all of the curriculum being taught in our comprehensive high schools, while also taking advantage of all of the opportunities that he now had in his new school. So he quickly learned after just about a month or two that uh, that's not just going to be hard, but it would actually be impossible. So just like that, he completely let go of his traditional mindset and could, took off from there. So while Gib at Gibson Eck, Yvonne was an inspiration for others, he was a friend to all and just a really down to earth, great person to be around. He continued to be a positive influence in the design and the creation of our school and the culture, and he always does, did so with integrity and passion. Yvonne is now a rising junior at, Rochester, at University of Rochester and an anthropology major. Yvonne is spending his summer as an urban fellow, supporting the community and anti-poverty work and immersing himself in the community and culture to learn everything that he can about Rochester. Yvonne's work with Student Voice is what inspired me to nominate him for this award. Student Voice is a nonprofit run by students for students where they position young people as storytellers, organizers, and institutional partners to advocate for student-driven solutions to educational equity. Yvonne has been with Student Voice for two years and is a member of their leadership team. Yvonne fills many roles, but primarily works as a field director, where he works to equip students as organizers in their own communities. Thank you, Yvonne, for your commit continued commitment to service. You have always been an inspiration to me, and I am so proud of your continued commitment to serving your community. 
So congratulations to Yvonne Mahesh, and I will turn it over to Yvonne to accept this award. Hello. Thank you so much, Julia. It's always so wonderful to see you. Um, hi, everybody. I would like to start this by saying that I am in the Buffalo Niagara Airport and I'm on the free Wi-Fi. And if something happens, I'm so sorry. I do have my hotspot on standby if I need to switch over. Timing is really interesting. Also apologize if there's noise. Um, again, it's really wonderful to see everybody. Uh, I always, I have notes. I should, I should pull them up. Uh, uh, thank you, Julia, uh, for sharing those, those fond memories. It's always interesting to think back to where I was at the beginning of high school to, and think about where I am now. Um, and I always say this, but I, am, I feel so lucky to have had a high school experience that I can look back on and be so happy about and feel so thankful for, because not everybody gets that experience. Um, and that's sort of the world we, we're striving for, right? But I feel so, so lucky to have had that. Uh, I was told that I could talk about whatever I wanted, and it feels weird to talk about myself for five to eight minutes. So I kind of wanted to take you all through some of the reasons that big picture learning means a lot to me and how, um, because I think, like Julia said, I there was a shift that happened. And it's thanks to the people that I, I met in high school. Um, I think uh, Gibson Eck and my connection with big picture learning made me and um, sort of helped me develop who I am today. So um, yeah, I wanted to take you through some of those. Yes, please turn your cameras on. It's great to see people's faces. <laughs> uh, so like Julia mentioned, coming to Gibson Up was a big shift for me um, and I had a really hard time shedding some of those like ideologies that I had going coming in, just a very like traditional school mindset, just like striving for like academic ex excellence, whatever that means. Um, and Julia um, was the first adult that I met really connected to Big Picture. And I have this very clear memory of sitting in my then high school in an empty classroom after school. Uh, and Julia asking me, what's, what's one thing you would change about the world? And I was really just like in this very narrow mindset. So I was like, man, our health curriculum sucks. And then she just sort of pushed me down that path. And I remember rambling and talking about it and all the things I would change and then looking down and Julia was sketching on a piece of paper, all the things I was talking about, like making a mind map. Um, and it was this wild moment of just somebody rolling with my ideas for the very first time, instead of saying, you know, that's out of your control. Um, and so I'm very, very thankful to have Julia in my life as one of the first people to tell me that school could be something more than what I knew it to be. Um, and at Kip's Neck, uh, my number one supporter and advocate and challenger uh, was Tanya Reichel. She was then my advisor and is now the Dean of Students. Um, and I can't begin to articulate what it was like to have an adult in school that not only called me out on my shit, but also listened to me when I was scared and when I was upset um, and helped me figure out what to do next. She was somebody who taught me to like sit in my feelings, but also take action on them. Um, Tanya drove me home at 10 or 11 in the evening just so I could sit in on an event with her across the city from where I lived. She came to performances I did outside of school. Um, and to this day, uh, she lives in my mind as the example of the kind of support all students deserve to have. Um, and I feel so lucky to have had her um, as that support for me. My mom always said, uh, I'm so glad Tanya is your advisor. She could totally win in a fight against all the other advisors. <laughs> Whole family is such a huge fan. Um, the other thing that sort of made me is um, the ability to do internships. I, I didn't realize there was a world outside of my home with my family, outside of the school, my, my old school that I just honestly didn't see myself graduating from. I didn't see like an, myself making it to that point. And so realizing there was a whole world outside of the school was life changing. And in particular, um, two people who influenced me immeasurably were um, Wilson uh, and Beth White. Um, and Wilson uh, was one of the first people who like, talk to me about like the world after high school <laughs> uh, and you know what to expect and what to think about. Um, he chaperoned me to Big Bang when I was in high school, you know, a, a constant support all throughout high school. Um, and Beth and everybody who knows Beth knows that she is such a healing presence. Um, and Beth is one of the people who taught me how to um, be kind to myself 
and to forgive myself when I when I am scared and nervous. Um, my whole family knows Beth. We've had dinner together. I think she she has uh, definitely changed my life a lot. So these these are just some of the, the adults in my life who uh, were mentors to me in many ways, in a way that I never had before high school. Um, and that's something that I wouldn't change for the world. Um, to talk a little bit about post high school um, in my last few minutes. Uh, Currently, I work at Student Voice, uh, and if you don't know anything about Student Voice, come talk to me later. Happy to chat about it. Um, uh, my favorite way that I've been able to connect with Big Picture Learning and connect with Gibbs Neck post-graduation is actually hosting an intern. Uh, my dear friend, Simone, uh, has been my intern for this past school year. She just graduated. Love you so much, Simone. Um, she was uh, produced a podcast uh, for Student Voice, and uh, this like shift of roles from student to mentor, though Simone is my friend, um, it really opened my eyes to what it must have been like for all of my amazing mentors to um, have spent time with me in high school and I'm just so immeasurably thankful to them and to Simone for trusting me with that experience. Um, and so so now I'm, I'm doing work with Student Voice. The thing that I, like Julia said, I do a ton of things, um, but the thing that means a lot to me is uh, the ability to continue to connect with high school students. Um, like I said, such a transformational time in my life. And I feel so lucky to have had it. And I know that not every student has it, had has that opportunity. And I, I honestly believe I've met some of the coolest students in the whole country uh, working at Student Voice, and you can quote me on that. Uh, and seeing, seeing people who care about education justice and um, bettering their communities on like very local le levels, um, improving their schools and their classrooms and their cities and students pushing national policy, um, you know, at the, at the age of 15 and 16, um, it, it reminds me of that shift that happened in my life that I'm so thankful for and how there are so many young people today working to make that shift for other people. And it, it gives me a sense of joy and, and hope um, and love towards the world. Um, I'm a little bit scattered. I apologize. There are people walking back and forth. The baggage claim is right there. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's just a little bit about the, the people that I'm thankful for and experiences um, that I am thankful for. Uh, I wish there was a, um, there's a million more things I wish I could say. I wish I had all, more time, but um, I'm really thankful to have gotten this award. Um, oh, wait, one more thing I do want to say. I'm also thankful to connect with Big Picture Learning through my student voice co colleague, um, Angel Velez, who graduated from Camden Big Picture, uh, somebody who uh, understands my, my Big Picture experience, and I, I love him so much. Um, that being said, um, sorry. <laughs> I am really thankful to see all of you and to be in community with all of you. Um, and I have to run off now to go catch a flight. Uh, but I can't wait to be in person with all of you again very, very soon. Uh, thank you, Yvonne. If there's one thing I can't wait for uh, when this is all over is to go back to giving people their awards in person. <laughs> this is so artificial, but we have sent Yvonne their award. I want to read the quote that was actually written, I think, by Simone. Um, Yvonne is committed to a radical reimagining of education in a way that prioritizes, prioritizes young people, well-being, and well-being, a true inspiration to the people around them. Yvonne, Thank you and congratulations. And Thank please so make your flight. <laughs> yes, I'm going to go make my flight. You're the best. Um, okay, so the encore session um, doesn't come together all at once. Basically, part of what I do is just pay attention to the things that are going on around the world all year long and then cherry pick them and say, that will be a great addition to the encore session one day. And our friends at the Maples met through mm -hmm. a TEDx event several months ago. Uh, and I reached out to Matt Henderson and said, these are the pieces of your presentation that I want to make part of my presentation. And Matt was game. So um, we have tried really hard to make this an international conference. We have tried really hard to blend the lines between Zoom and the real world. And that's why a lot of what we're trying to do is really go out into the world, even if it's through our computers. So at this point, I'd love to throw to our friends over in the Seven Oaks School District. Um, for really the next uh, several pieces of our presentation. Matt, take it away.
Cool. Thanks, Chris. Um, and just before we, we sort of move on with our part of the agenda, I just wanted to make sure that we did uh, we acknowledge the land that we're coming from and bring, bring greetings from, from that. And where we come from in Winnipeg, Canada, is called Treaty 1. And so Seven Oaks School Division acknowledges that we live and work in the territories of the Anishinaabe, the Cree, the Dakota, the Dene, the Métis, and Oji Cree Nations. Seven Oaks School Division sits in Treaty 1 territory, the ancestral traditional homeland of the Anishinaabe peoples. Treaty 1, signed in 1871, so 150 years ago, took this territory from seven local Anishinaabe First Nations in order to make the land available for settler use and ownership. So hi, Big Bang, uh, and congrats uh, to, to Evan. Uh, my name is Matt Henderson, and I'm one of the assistant superintendents uh, here in Seven Oaks School Division in Winnipeg, Canada. Uh, and to us, treaty is covenant. It's spiritual. And I think part of why Seven Oaks uh, couples so well with big picture is that we've really drawn a line in the sand when it comes to equity, when it comes to removing barriers for, for all learners, and in particular Indigenous learners, to have the means for a decent life and to flourish. And, uh, and so that fits really well within, it, within our uh, philosophy of really resisting uh, and, uh, and reclaiming. Uh, Twelve years ago, Seven Oaks School Division opened up its first big picture learning school to Seven Oaks Met. Uh, and uh, it, has, it was widely successful and still is amazing and does outstanding things and backflips for kids. Uh, five years ago, I had the privilege of being the founding principal of the Maples Met. And then this September, we're opening up our third big picture school in the, uh, in the downtown area in our, in our warehouse district. And uh, they are the only three big picture learning schools in Canada. And so many, and Elliot always asks me, how come there's not more in Canada? And, uh, and I say to him, I don't know why that is. There's all sorts of schools. I mean, as many of you get lots of visitors that come and they say, oh, we do internships, we do projects, we do all this, all those things that you, you guys say you do in big picture schools. Um, but they don't. They don't put it all together. And they don't have the amazing advisors and advisories uh, that, that are really at the center of big picture learning schools. And you're going to meet two of our amazing advisors today uh, in, a, in a little bit. But before we do that, uh, I'm going to introduce you to a couple of our grads. They just graduated from the Maples Met. I think they're around. Guys, you want to come out? So when they first came in, in grade nine, when I was principal, they were this big. And now they're, they're giant. They're like eight feet tall. Uh, and uh, they're going to perform for you. Paulo is playing the violin. He's going to the University of Manitoba School of Music next year. And Ryan Spence, he's playing the fiddle. He is a world-renowned Métis fiddler. And they're going to blow your mind. And then they're going to do their thing, uh, and then I'll introduce you to uh, two of our amazing advisors here in Seven Oaks.
Thank you, Paulo and Ryan, uh, and hello, Big Picture Learning. Uh, my name is Rory Brett, and I'm an advisor at the Seven Oaks Met School, and I'm really honored uh, to be to have been asked to present the Advisor of Excellence Award to Terry Willard. I've had the pleasure of being Terry's teaching partner for the last six years at Seven Oaks Met School. Every single day, Terry brings countless enthusiasm and positively impacts every single student that she comes in contact with. She sets high expectations for her students and she helps elevate our staff's understanding and awareness of sustainability and climate issues by ensuring that they are integral parts of our school cult culture. <clears throat> in the classroom, Terry engages students by weaving sustainability and climate issues <clears throat> uh, and Indigenous perspectives into all that she does. Her passion for environment and sustainability is infectious in both our staff and our student population. She fosters two, true engagement that is student driven and it creates a force in our school that addresses, calls for, and ultimately takes action for change. Organizing school-wide conferences around the global climate crisis, applying for grants that allow for the purchase of solar panels for our school, attending climate reality leaders training, connecting with sustainability leaders in our community, coordinating with local filmmakers, Lasha Mauchin, in the creation of a documentary film on youth's role in the global climate strikes, tackling HEPA filters and air quality testing in our classrooms, graphing local COVID data with her math students, and running our school's Gay Straight Alliance and our Dungeons and Dragons clubs are just a few of the examples of Terry's daily activities at the Seven Oaks Met School, where she always goes above and beyond. Ultimately, Terry understands that when something is important, we have to seek out experts and build relationships in the community. She cultivates those relationships that allow our school community to take true action that is meaningful and impactful. And without further ado, I would like to present the Advisor of Excellence Award to Terry Willard.
Awesome. Let's get this started. Um, thank you. As, as some of you may or may not realize, we are sitting in a giant empty auditorium at Southern Oak School Division. So it's really weird to be here kind of with you watching the video feeds through Zoom, but at the same time looking out at a vast empty space. Uh, and I don't even get the benefit of seeing your faces on Zoom. So this is a little bit weird and, and bear with us on this. But first, I just want to say thank you, Rory, uh, for the introduction. It's hard to believe that we've been teaching together for six years. And if you ask my partner at home, frankly, it flabbergasts her that anyone would put up with working with me for six years. Um, you are the soul of patience and all things, because I'm not always, uh, it will come as a shock, the most organized or timely human being working as an advisor. Uh, I have to say, getting this award this year, um, it was completely an unexpected thing, largely because living through this year, well, it felt like perhaps the most chaotic, muddled, incoherent year of my entire life. Uh, if there was ever a year when I questioned my ability to actually be an advisor, it was this year. Uh, because supporting a grade 12 advisory through a pandemic brings out a lot of big emotions in students and advisors alike. And trying to work through them as an advisory is a huge challenge. Um, I don't have to tell you that being an educator in a pandemic is hard. You all just lived through this. But we need to acknowledge the context that we're all working in. Because you notice up here in Manitoba, we're still wearing masks on a daily basis because we were one of the last places to get hit hard by the third wave of the pandemic. But I want to give you a few insights into life as a Manitoba educator in the last year, just to ground the reality of how different places are and how we manifest some of the principles and values of big picture learning. Um, stories are important and it helps us to make sense of the world around us. So well, let's start with COVID. Um, since last August, COVID's impact it on Manitoba, it's really ramped up with second and third waves around the world with new, more infectious variants that seem to emerge monthly. We were in school, out of school, and hybrid school models seemingly changing every few weeks. And a lot of times we were just making it up as we went along. At the 7 to Met School last year, each cohort was in school two or three days a week. And on the days that we didn't have any space to be as advisors, we worked out of the multi-purpose rooms at the local hockey arena and the community centers and contacted our students virtually from there, trying to run our advisories or mentor them through virtual internships. You know, at first it was kind of fun looking out through the windows over the ice, watching the learn to skate programs and community hockey games. But as the cases rose in November and the death toll started to mount, the lights went off over the arenas and over the ice and things got really dark and quiet and lonely on those non-cohort teaching days. But it wasn't just COVID that we had to deal with, because the rest of the problems in society never just disappeared to give us time to deal with one thing at a time, to just deal with a global pandemic. For instance, climate change never stopped. Despite the massive restrictions on transportation, global CO2 emissions fell by only 6.4% in 2020, and are soaring this year in the second highest annual growth rate of CO2 emissions in history. Across Canada this summer, record high temperatures have led to deaths and more hospitalizations. Meanwhile, in the north, where I was in Churchill with my family last week, the sea ice on Hudson Bay melted and collapsed a month early. Extending the summer fasting period for polar bears and forcing them to closer into human communities in search of food, which is a danger for both bears and people alike. For the past week, We've all been hiding inside in Winnipeg because the whole city has been blanketed with smoke from the drought-fueled forest fires that are currently raging along the Manitoba-Ontario border. Fires that have forced First Nations communities to flee their homes and to take refuge in the city, from which many of their ancestors were actually pushed out 150 years ago when Manitoba joined Canada and treaties were made and instantly broken. You see, settler colonialism is built into the bones of our city, our province, and our country. And as we've all seen this summer, 
Our healthcare and educational institutions have often literally been built right next to the unmarked graves of indigenous children who were taken from their families in an attempt to break the communities as part of the, one of the largest land thefts in history. We are all continuing to pay the price for that genocide and the lost lives of indigenous peoples, the destruction of community, the loss of self-governance, the loss of health, and the degradation of our environment. And if that wasn't all enough, the Manitoba provincial government decided to move ahead this spring with a piece of legislation called Bill 64 here locally, which aims to eliminate the 38 elected school boards across the province and to replace them with an appointed provincial level committee advised by volunteer parent committees. The government also gutted education budgets, sending out about $250 million in property tax rebate checks for previous education property tax, with no plan disclosed on how other provincial taxes would be raised or allocated to cover those missing dollars. As educators, we know that these broader issues, they're not abstract or part of some ancient history. They're embedded in the air that we breathe and the water that we drink. They shape every social interaction in and out of our classroom. They underlie which students come to school well rested and fed and which do not. They determine which ones are part of the 10,000 kids in foster care in Manitoba and which are raised by family and relatives. They determine which families have been exposed to COVID repeatedly and which have not. And they determine which students have the support to learn how to be fluent in their own language and which do not. Faced with the realities of a year characterized by the interwoven, interlinked problems of COVID, the climate crisis, racism, and an anti-democratic government, you can't fault the educators for feeling a little bit overwhelmed. In a world in which it feels like everything's out of control, how do we possibly think in the mornings that we can prepare, prepare students to understand and to address and solve these massive problems? Where do we even start each day? How do we help young people to understand these issues, particularly when some adults are profiting from shoveling out vast amounts of disinformation and denial? How do we even dare to try while students are reeling on a personal level from family loss? But more importantly, how do we not? Because problems don't go away just because we don't feel up to them in the morning. Now, the only way I've found to do this is to actually do it together. If there's one thing that we've learned from the youth climate movement, it's that the only way through the anxiety of our age is to do something and to do it together. You can't protect kids and teenagers from the world. They know at some level how bad things are, even if they sometimes look like they're hiding from all of this in a world dominated by anime and TikTok videos. But when people feel like they're alone in the world, depression and anxiety win. We can't get out of our heads, let alone scale up our impacts to the level that's required uh, simply as individuals. Because just doing more research on issues and making more small changes at a personal level isn't going to cut it anymore. And we've seen that over the last 20 years. But if we work together and if we commit to each other, if we insist on carving out space in the midst of chaos for love and laughter, we can actually do something. And doing one thing to make a difference each day is more empowering than doing nothing. Do you have students worried about the world? Why well, grab a CO2 monitor and start measuring air quality with them. Go to rallies, make films, get involved in local transit and active transportation dialogues and hearings, build gardens, develop public art that celebrates the contributions and creativity of black and indigenous members of the community. But you know this because as advisors, this is what you do every day. You know how to do this. Don't give up on it, especially when you feel like you're in over your head. Let me let you in on one of the world's worst kept secrets. You're never going to know enough to feel competent. Don't use it as an excuse to delay action. Because, you know, there's a, there's a gap between knowledge and action. 
you can't fill that gap with more knowledge. Trust me, I've, I've tried. I spend way too much time reading and, spe- and you know, pulling everything in on social media. Every time that you learn more, that chasm between knowledge and action feels like it widens even further. And you can justify putting off doing anything till that future day when you're going to actually know enough or understand it all to do something. But the only way to bridge that gap between knowledge and action is through relationships, because relationships are what help you to find credible information, to know that you can adapt that to your specific circumstances, and to trust that you have people out there who can backstop you as you develop the skills to take action. Relationships let you take the steps forward each day, knowing that others can help you to build the bridge as you walk on it. Now, as advisors, we do this every day for our students. We help them to find members of the community and as mentors and to build communities of support that will help them to move confidently forward into adulthood. And sometimes we can forget to do that for ourselves. It is important to cultivate your own relationships within your community, to invest in them, to acknowledge them, to celebrate them, because they will carry you forward. Which is why I can only accept this award today on behalf of everyone who carries me forward every day. And that includes the whole amazing team at the Seven Oaks Met School, my colleagues in the now two other Seven Oak Met Schools at Maples Met and the downtown campus, and all the folks working in and partnering with the Seven Oaks School Division, especially our divisional elders, Elder Dan and Elder Mary, and the indigenous educators who haven't given up on the rest of us yet as well as folks like the Queso crew. And for the Spanish speakers, that doesn't mean that we have a cheese appreciation club up here. Queso stands for Queering Seven Oaks, and it's a group of Seven Oaks educators that are trying to make sure that our division is a safe and wonderful place for all of our LGBTQ students, families, and staff. I also want to give a shout out to a whole BPL network that shines a light on how amazing students can be when caring adults see them fully and work with them to achieve their goals, one student at a time. And also the amazing educators, parents, and community members that I've met online and who have been involved with the Climate March, with treaty education and the reconciliation movements, with Safe September and Red for Ed, because you're all amazing. And honestly, without all of you, we couldn't do what we do with students every single day. Working together, we can ensure that not only are our students ready for the world, but that we have a world that's ready for and worthy of our students. One day at a time, one student at a time, one community at a time. So thank you. Onwards to the next year and to building more bridges together. So with that, Chris, it's back over to you. Thank you all. Uh, Terry, to her credit, when we were preparing for this session, asked me, would it be okay if I got up and made a statement? <laughs> and I said, Terry, do you remember that we walk around with shirts that say we are activists on them? Terry, you embody that, your colleagues embody that, everybody in the network embodies that. Uh, I wanna share, I'm sharing with the folks currently, your award, which you haven't received yet because it's more difficult to send these things internationally. Um, But the quote provided by one of your many nominators says, it's hard to imagine another advisor who has literally been able to save lives and be a real life superhero in our schools. Thank you, Terry. All right, listen, this is the fifth time that we've done this encore session. We did three last year at Summerfest. Remember we had that crazy conference where we had three (laughs) weeks? Never again. Um, We did it once at um, the leadership conference and we're doing it today. And I I will admit, I put this pressure on myself, but I try to find ways to top. um, And we're we're gonna get ready to conclude and really throw it out there. There's no... There's no easy way to make this transition. I know Carla's ready to help me. I'm going to shift now from Zoom to Facebook Live. You stay here. We're going to broadcast Big Pictures Facebook Live to everybody. And as soon as I see it ready, Carla, um, I'll, oh, there we go. So 
Um, and as soon as I see it ready, Carla, um, I'll, oh, there we go. So, um, come with me as we venture through Fannie Lou Hamer Freedom High School. Uh, we all in the Big Picture Network, especially those on the staff, have a school that's near us um, that we fall in love with, um, that we visit as much as we can. Uh, for me, that's Fannie Lou. You know, I, I get to come here probably three or four times a year. Uh, I get to meet the students. Uh, folks know, uh, you know, this is where I met Nassim Hamid. Uh, this is where I met Jeff Palladino. Uh, this is where I meet uh, tons of amazing educators, uh, leaders, and students. Um, and we're heading now to the upper floor, Fannie Lou Hamer. Um, it is a myth that big picture urban schools don't have beautiful outdoor areas. They do. They do have beautiful outdoor areas. Um, wouldn't you say that's true, Carlos? Does this school have a beautiful outdoor area? We have beautiful outdoor areas. All right, well, Carlos, what's next? Well, right now, we're gonna go see who's out here at Fannie Lou. I think we got some friends that are here. What's up, y'all? All right. Let's go see who's here. Let's go. Let's make some noise. All right, is anybody here at Fannie Lou? Which is proof of success. Wow, wow, wow. Let's go. All right, are we ready to go? I think we're ready to go. All right, we're ready to go. I would like to introduce folks to the Bronx's own Anthony Anderson drums. Enjoy, celebrate, here we go.
might have seen her real quick. You might have seen her real quick as we was going through it. While Anthony's getting himself together for the next set. What's up, Big Bang? What's up, Big Bang? From the Bronx. Misha from the Bronx. Hello. Sending it right back. We're yes. sending it right back. So everyone throw your hearts out in the chat, in the Zoom, on the Facebook Live. Send love, send hearts to the Chancellor, to Misha from the Bronx. Let her know that we, we got her, we feel her, we, we're here for her always. Love you guys. Love you, Big Bang family. All right, here we go. All right, everyone, make some noise. Here we go. <laughs> and we got Jeff, Jeff Palladino. What's going on, Jeff? All right. We good, Je all right, Jax. Everyone, ready? Brilliant. Uh, we got some. We got some celebrities. We got Joaquin from Bronx International. Yep. Yep. We got Al Sylvia. Old school BPL. We got Superintendent on the tag here. Woo! Nancy Bad doing the thing. Cam Gordon walk about party. Yes, indeed. Abby here to hear. Oh yes, 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 yes. There you go. <laughs> Listen, I, I'm sorry. Obviously, some sort of tech malfunction happened because the party is still happening upstairs. Listen, that's what we want to bring back. That's what we want to do at Leadership. That's what we want to do at Big Bang. That's what we want to do at tonight's party. I know Carlos already talked about that. But listen, I got to get back. There's a party going on upstairs. Dang. Before I go, and again, Carla might have said this. Any one of you might have said this. Listen, it's not fair that every year the same people's birthday fall during Big Bang because we shouted out Dennis. We shout out Beth. Now we got to shout out Sun. Hey. Yo! We got to say hey, hey, Big hey, Bang hey, in hey. January. 
But anyway, hey, the, hey, sun, the sun doesn't shine on this conference without sun. Happy birthday, buddy. Thank you, brother. I appreciate you, man. Thank you, everyone. Oh well, wait, happy then. Happy birthday! Happy birthday to you! Hey, hey! Happy birthday to you! Hey, hey! Happy hey. birthday, hey. dear son! Thank you. And everyone Thank else's you. birthday during these last four days. Oh. Oh. Happy, happy birthday, birthday to you. you! Get it! Yay. Get it! Get it! Mm. Get it! Yeah! <laughs> Good luck, family. Appreciate you. All right, folks. We will see you in a few hours. Have fun. Thank you so much for joining us. See you then. Thank you. Bye-bye. Son, son, for your birthday, you get a surprise. All expenses, flight home.